Hi, my name is Ivan, and I'm director of engineering in Ring Central. So I work in different roles in Ring Central. I work as a software developer, software architect, team lead, uh, product manager, like every, everything manageable. And right now I'm working in Ring Central and advocating and implementing GitOps processes across the whole company. So it will be my pleasure to share with you our experience, how we approach GitOps in a large enterprise company with thousands upon thousands of users. Uh, huge workloads and what challenges we faced. Excellent. And my name is Tama Onakahara. I run the developer experience team at Weaveworks, the company that created Flux and Flagger uh, and coined the term GitOps. So we're really excited to share our stories here um, for you to learn from. Uh, so please take a picture of this QR code. Uh, it links to a site where we have all the Flux things for this week, whether it's our Flux booth and all these talks. Um, and uh, activities that we have. And for those of you watching the recording, uh, we'll still have the site up so that when the recordings are up, hopefully you can see it. Uh, it also has ways for um, you to follow up with questions, so please do chat with us. I'll show this at the end as well if you miss it, but thanks for taking the picture. Um, so Ring Central will talk about um, what they do and what their drivers are, and they're kind of in four key buckets, um, security and compliance, scale, velocity, and reliability, and we'll share how Flux and Flagger help with all of these in really important ways. Uh, so first of all, security and compliance. So uh, Ring Central is a company that absolutely needs um, security and compliance, and GitOps helps with that. Um, first of all, if you don't know, um, they have multiple products. There's um, telephone and messaging and video. I'm sure many of you have worked at companies where you actually have those physical phones, uh, as well as other capabilities. So imagine it's a company that has a chief compliance officer. It has auditors both inside the company and outside. And so auditability and observability are absolutely required um, uh, needs that they have. Um, they, both have, they also have legacy and modern systems, which brings with it uh, dependencies and requirements and configs and secrets management stuff, which brings certain levels of complexity that they need to take care of. And similarly, because of that, they have multiple solutions and products that bring those same challenges. So that means they absolutely need to have a reliable GitOps system and tools like Flux help with that and to be able to give them the security, compliance, auditability, and policy management that they need that we'll cover in this talk. Um, especially when you have human beings involved, it's just not gonna, everything that you see on the left here, the things that they need to do is not gonna happen if they're chasing after human beings of like who made what change, under what context, when, you know, all that is too manual and that would not be able to be uh, possible. So Flux helps with that. Um, so quickly, if, uh, has anybody not used Flux yet? Right, so great. If you're new to Flux, um, we'll kind of segue and share little bits about it. So Flux is a project in the CNCF. We're incubating and actually right after KubeCon, we'll be finishing the final steps, we hope, to get to graduation. So it's been a wonderful journey here in the CNCF. And Flux, like I said, it comes from WeWorks and the company that coined GitOps. So it's been providing GitOps both for apps and infrastructure. And one thing that it does is it uh, listens to the repo. And if there's a change in that their repo as a single source of truth, um, it uh, talks with Kubernetes and, and implements that change. So it kind of created that, that idea of having that single source of truth in Git. Um, and because you already have a version controlling system, that means you already have an audit trail that's part of that. So there we go about the need for auditability. Um, and it also provides added security because you're not exposing your API to the outside world um, and you're also not um, sh um, putting your secrets in CI. And if people have been following the news, you know, more and more hacking is starting to move in the CI space because they're seeing vulnerabilities there and being able to access a lot of data. So Flux is already, you know, steps ahead of this and always making sure that um, we're evolving so that we meet those security needs. Um, that includes um, supporting OCI, the Open Container Initiative, and COSIGN, which means that you have added uh, capabilities for um, verification. I think the next one is yours. Okay. Yeah, and like Tomal said, uh, we will start firstly with security in mind, because if you're working in a large enterprise, and if you're a large enterprise, when you're trying to implement some uh, delivery tools or development tools which tightly coupled with your production system, I think the first question everyone answers is uh, what you will do with compliance and security. And I would not talk 
only about just the compliance. I will talk about actual security because uh, Ring Central is, a, as you can see from this map, every country marked in orange we actively operating in. You can buy our services, and most likely every one of you in your life encountered or dialed to the phone line or contact center line, which uh, operated or hosted by the Ring Central. So we like biggest telephony company in the United States, at least on unified communication as a market space. So when we yeah, so when we're trying to tackle such a diverse geography and tackle uh, different types of compliance, so we operate in government and healthcare, so it's a HIPAA compliance, different SOC compliance, we're a public company. So you can, you can imagine it's uh, like audit upon audit, and we have it constantly during our years. We also always try to target it by the hackers. We have different types of attempted breaks in our system and we want to make sure all our clients are safe and every data is protected. So the first, first and most important question is the security, not the scale, not any other one, but if you fail at security, you basically do not need to use this tool <laughs> or if you cannot answer this question. So uh, when we talk, before we talk about the security itself and how flag and flags approach it, I want just to segue into one particular important part we use and we use it I think it's very tied to our success of using GitOps in the company and we use it everywhere it's a grammatic build so we're using if anyone of you is familiar with build systems such as Basel or Nixos or just a term of hermetic build it means regardless of the environment regardless of the computer you run you build on or build your container on uh, day time uh, different libraries, you get bit to bit exact copy of the container if you build from the same source. So what does it mean the same source? Source is a source of truth, it's our source code. So if we have everything which needs to be, so there's no dynamic uh, variables, dynamic dependencies, everything is pinned down. And we, if, if we have, if everything pinned down and inside the repository, we can build a grammatic container. Uh, and uh, we can argue it's uh, basically, we can build it on 10 different machines. It should be bit to bit exact replica. If something goes wrong and the replica is not exact, it means the machine could be compromised as the process is compromised. And as you can, and it's a development practice. It's not, have nothing to do with GitOps yet, but as you can see we, how we go from here to GitOps because uh, in our development life, Git repository is a source of truth. Yes, it's a source of our source code and all the dependencies. So we wanted to do the same in our infrastructure. So how we can approach it in our infrastructure? And here is DevOps or GitOps uh, helps us and answer the question. It's a little bit complicated image. I think the slides will share. I will not go detail it through it. But uh, we definitely divide our domain into runtime and configuration domain. And configuration means everything which sits in Git. So we. Uh, apply it everywhere we use GitOps and it's very important we use Git-centric approach or configuration as a code, infrastructure as a code, as I would say it in the keynote presentation, we're trying to see what everything we do can be outlined as a YAML file or Terraform configuration file or any other file inside the Git repository which can we act upon and act in an immutable manner, same as for example with our distroless and our grammatic images. So going from here, we can definitely see uh, from the security point of view, we also, while we're using flags, uh, we're implementing different security practices such as static scan for the CVE vulnerabilities and CVE lists. So if we have every dependency pinned down, we can easily do the reverse scan, which helps the security a lot. So what does it mean? It means if you have zero days uh, vulnerability in your, in your system, you can, and you know every desired, and you know desired state of our cluster. And if desired state diverges, it's an incident. So we, we manage and we basically always monitor divergence of the state. But if we have the desired state in the repository, we can go and see on the release of zero day vulnerability. We know exactly where this vulnerability is existing for our thousands of clusters. So we do not need to, time to scan because if we scan every system for vulnerability, uh, after we receive the CV vulnerability. It can take weeks 
in a large company such as ours. So it definitely helps us to uh, with detecting the C vulnerabilities, zero day vulnerabilities. We also employ Flux integration with Mozilla SOPS. So if you don't know, it's a really great tool to keep your secrets inside the Git repository. Sounds counterintuitive, but it's very nice thing, very nice uh, solution to keep things atomic. So it changes are not distributed among different repository, like a secret vault and, for example, your Git repository. It's all in one place in atomic state and a Git commit. So we do not, we, we solely adhere to the practice of storing every fun, everything in Git. And it's helped us and helped security compliance and security audit in our company. It made it a lot easier. All the trails, all the changes in Git. Uh, Merge requests is a change request. So if you, for example, enterprise, you know this change management system, etc. So merge request is completely a maps one to one. And we managed to convince all our auditors, such as KPMG, PricewaterhouseCoopers, and different other auditors, and our internal security teams, what it really does adhere to our existing security practices. It was a big win because we did not need to recertificate. So we do not need to do additional certification in terms of security and compliance here. So yes, this is how we approach the security. Tamal? All right. <laughs> Thanks. Sorry. Um, all right. Uh, so hopefully companies like yours that have regulations and such, that's um, something that's relatable. Um, I'm sure many of you have issues with scale. Uh, so Ring Central's company as well, as we talked about, um, they're a global company, but they, so they have millions of users, hundreds of thousands of businesses, 200 Kubernetes clusters and growing, um, and thousands of deployments and workloads, I think tens of thousands perhaps. And as we showed on the map, multiple regions around the world, they've got hybrid clouds, they've got their own data centers, as well as GK and EKS. And again, as we mentioned, multiple solutions, as well as different development practices within house. So there's a lot that needs to get managed in internal customers customers that need to be happy at scale. Um, so how does Flux help with scale? Uh, so the Flux project is actually um, a microservices architecture and a set, it's a set of controllers that do things like creation, deletion, um, and updates to both your um, app deployments and to changes that you make for your infrastructure. Um, the source controller is one of the key controllers and one of the other ways that it helps with uh, scalability is that it has caching features that kind of unblock any issues that happen. Um, and it's important to mention here that our controllers support natively both customize and Helm. So that means like um, if you've seen the story in the CNCF, the Department of Defense absolutely wanted to use Flux because they needed to use the, their entire Helm ecosystem and Flux um, allows that to happen because it has native support. Um, and you have many GitOps options. As you hopefully heard in the keynotes, you know, there's the GitOps principles um, by the GitOps working group. Um, Flux completely complies with them. And within those options, you have um, the version that we talked about where you have a Git repo that has a single source of truth. Um, but also with OCI, now you have the availability to um, have uh, Flux um, consume artifacts, OCI artifacts, and to implement GitOps in that way. So some of our companies, um, enterprise companies who I can't name, who have major, major scale issues, you know, they're at the forefront and they're major users of Flux. So we've made sure that um, we've met those needs so that they can um, not have a uh, scale issues that come with Git itself. So Git is still there, it's just moved to the left so that um, we can meet their scaling needs. So wherever you are in your journey, just starting or wherever you know that you can start with a project that's already built for scale. Um, so a little bit about um, um, your repo structure. Um, mono repos are one um, um, methodology that we um, kind of recommend. And I know that uh, Yvonne is very uh, passionate about mono repos. Yeah. So the second need is the scale. So uh, if you figured out your compliance need and your security need, you may need to make sure you can run it at a large scale. So meaning, meaning, yes, you can definitely try and many project starts like this as a toy project inside the company, but usually it does not make much sense to have many different processes, many different ways to deploy and manage your infrastructure in a large enterprise. You want basically to make sure the things you build, the things you're trying to adapt, it can be adapted by the entire company. And when we're talking about the large deployments, and like Tamal said, we have thousands of, uh, ten thousands of clusters different all around the world in Europe and Southeast Asia, multiple clusters and multiple servers in the United States. Uh, also, we 
present on the cloud servers and in Google and in Amazon, so it's, it's a huge infrastructure. And if we cannot answer, answer how do we scale that infrastructure efficiently, uh, we will most likely fail. So it will not be adopted widely by the company. It will be adopted by the some departments, but make me it will not work, will not work. So how do we approach it? It's already on the slide. So we approach it on scaling on mono repositories. So what does it mean? So why mono repository is so important? So many of you maybe already heard worked with mono repositories uh, with just your software development. For example, Google has a really nice way of managing this mono repository a system which we also use called Basel uh, for build process. So we have quite extensive uh, history in working with mono repositories. And we also have history of Kubernetes. So we started to use Kubernetes back in 2016 and quickly found out uh, two things. First thing is ain't easy. So it was quite complicated to manage multiple clusters. And the second thing is uh, we most likely it's really hard to manage large Kubernetes clusters. And we started to think about how we can manage and create multiple smaller Kubernetes clusters and dissect them on the networking level and trying to configure in a way uh, different types of workloads work on different types of Kubernetes clusters in isolated systems. We also have huge lab environments which have spans around like 200 workloads, Kubernetes workloads, uh, it's already old number, we're around 500 Kubernetes clusters up and running right now uh, and half of them in the lab and the staging environments. Uh, and uh, yeah, so we have multiple clusters. So how do you manage these multiple clusters efficiently? And here's a mono repo, I think is a great answer to that. Because you could have in the single repository information and configuration of all your clusters in the same place. Uh, you can have multiple mono repositories if you can distinct them by some common uh, thing. Like for example, in Central we have multiple product lines which are more or less separate like video and phone, a messaging, uh, contact center and voice over IP in telephony solutions. So we have mono repositories for each of those lines. But uh, uh, they still are huge product lines. So what we do, we basically do a very simple thing and it works for us great. So first of all, uh, one thing I want to mention, try to keep it simple, especially in large enterprises. So what we do, we just uh, using customize with flux and we have our main branch uh, acted as a, as a basis, so we keep our basis, all our basis and uh, common things in the main branch. And we have multiple branches and folders inside this repository for different environments, which top builds on this top uh, main branch. But what it gives us, it gives us ability to infer the state of all our infrastructure. And we'll, it will come a lot more important later when we will talk about how we keep it reliable. Uh, but uh, essentially, yes, it's very simple uh, distinction. And Flux uh, helps you to basically, as long as your Git repository is performant enough and you can fetch changes and you can fetch uh, state of the Git repository fast enough from the multiple clusters, you're good. We're using custom GitLab deployment, our self-hosted one, uh, enterprise uh, solution. So, uh, we have multiple caches and set up and making sure our Git repository is always available and performant. Uh, but uh, yes, this is important part of it. But if you again a large company, you really want to have your Git repository and your workplace where every developer is relying on to be always available, performant and uh, well behaved. So if you already have it, I think it's a great way to scale Flux and on any GitOps repository simply without any complicated solution to, to basically multiple installation of multiple clusters. Thank you. Excellent. All right. Uh, third point, uh, third need, velocity. I'm sure that's important for all of you. So imagine at Ring Central, right? Um, they've got various teams. They got to move quickly. They can't. Um, have slowdowns from miscommunications or people not knowing what the desired state is and human error <laughs> has come up a lot in our topics of conversation. So GitOps with Flux uh, provides this ability to have a single pane of glass for the desired state and that really helps with um, these issues of miscommunication. And that helps them really reach a state of um, being able to implement DevOps in their company, which means um, a shared ownership and end-to-end -end ownership. So their teams even talk about um, they own
design, creation, maintenance, testing to even support tickets. And um, that means there's no separate delivery team. Um, they're not detached from the production process. So how does Flux help with that? Flux has a lot of capabilities with observability and notifications um, through uh, its own use and, and integrations that um, our community has worked on. Um, I love the quote that uh, Yvonne was talking about that um, Flux makes Kubernetes easier. So if you're um, you know, having certain challenges, we'll talk about how Flux can help with that. Um, so one of the basic things that Flux can do is um, it has events, and so um, you can get notifications through the platforms that you use, such as Slack or Discord or others that we support. Um, and we're also increasingly working across um, various integrations. So um, Flux is moving into your IDE. So if your app developers are doing deployments, um, they can do less context switching and they can just be within one place. So we've started with Visual Studio Code. How many people use Visual Studio Code or people in there? Excellent. So you should definitely check out, it's our GitOps extension. Uh, Kingdon's here who's working on it. It's really fantastic. So you can literally um, manage Flux and do your deployments from within your IDE and not have to context switch. Um, if you like UIs, there are options. Um, there's a free and open source Weave GitOps UI um, that we have out there. You can just check it out. Um, and I think it's really important to mention here that you can also use um, tools like Arc Kubernetes, EKS Anywhere, and um, um, D2IQ's platform. And so Microsoft, Amazon, and D2IQ have chosen Flux, and they trust Flux as the tool that delivers GitOps to their end customers. Um, so if you're already using those uh, clouds, then you have those options as well. So um, the, the QR code will have links for you to check them out. So I think that's yeah. it. Okay, so I'll try to keep it very short because we have not much time and I will want to leave it for the end. So, very important like side again, segue into the velocity is the DevOps. So as a DevOps, um, so I'm very heavy advocate at DevOps and DevOps not, I think it's misunderstood term in many terms, especially in, in many ways, especially in enterprise, because right now, but not right now, but before uh, we had so-called, you know, so-called, we have still have uh, DevOps engineers. So the people who uh, try to build infrastructure and try to support the infrastructure for, for our development teams. And uh, we have around 3,000 developers, since 3,000 engineers in Great Central. And about half of them was on the supportive role. So it was not, 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 we were not software developers. And uh, like big bunch of them was DevOps, DevOps engineers. It outlines the big problem because if you need so many engineers, specific engineers to maintain your infrastructure, something is wrong. And for me, DevOps was always been a shared responsibility within the team and shared responsibility for the product. So the DevOps team is a team who owns the product, who makes the changes to this product, who maintain it and deploy it. So when we're talking about GitOps and uh, Flux and all other solutions, uh, we bringing this infrastructure closer to the development. So we were able to simplify infrastructure management. We were able to make it in, in a way it's easy for our developers to work it because it's a source code, it's Git repo, it's mono repository, it's all we're familiar with. And it makes, uh, so basically I think it makes the DevOps, it like GitOps and Flux, the main DevOps, what it's meant to be and then what's it evolved right now, which is like kind of some kind of abomination from my point of view, so. And it, of course it increased, sorry, about, it increased our velocity and sometimes tenfold when we used like other practices when you had this waterfall process or different agile processes and pipelines. So we do not have any pipelines in the company right now when we use GitOps and it made our delivery like 10 times or even 20 times faster. So it's, it's a great tool and uh, DevOps is a key uh, practice to utilize when you're working with GitOps. So you always should think about it. Awesome. All right, and the fourth need, uh, reliability, which I'm sure is important for all of you as well. Um, so here again, um, we'll talk a little bit about Flagger, which is a sub-project of, um, of Flux. And this is really important at Ring Central because um, as we talked about millions of users, hundreds of thousands of businesses, these are business critical needs. I mean, their telephones have to work, right? So um, these are things where they need reliability um, built into the infrastructure. Um, they also need deployment processes that are verifiable, testable, um, and safe. 
Um, and we'll talk about how exciting it is that like, we can create um, policy-led environments for your developers to um, be able to do the things that they need and know that they have the guardrails up and so the human error won't come into play. Um, so Flagger, the sub-project that provides um, progressive delivery, um, which I really love about this story, it helps users, if all of you are kind of on your GitOps journey, we're aware that there's a lot of changes that you have to make or your teams have to make, even in the way that you're thinking, like things can feel new and unsafe. Um, so Flagger really helps with that and it's really great to hear people out in the wild um, feeling that safety net for errors um, because um, Flagger provides, um, so this term is fairly new, progressive delivery. It's an umbrella term for things like canary deployments, blue-green, um, A-B testing, etc. cetera. Um, and what it does is it uh, decouples the app deployment process from the release process. So basically, if you have a service mesh or ingress controller, Flagger can use that to um, decide to route traffic from you know, your first source and then slowly dole it out to the new one based on metrics of success or failure and roll back if it doesn't meet that threshold. So basically, Flux will notice the change and start the process, the GitOps process. But before Kubernetes can take over, Flagger will come in and say, OK, the user uh, set thresholds for me. Um, I'm going to take metrics, for example, from Prometheus or Datadog or whatever. And based on those metrics, I'll keep checking you know, every 10 seconds. You know, uh, I'll route a little bit of traffic. Are there errors? Am I within the threshold? OK, I'll route a little bit more and a little bit more until you've um, completely moved over. Or if it says, no, I haven't met the threshold, it will roll back. And so what's really great about this, as Stefan has said, is like you can deploy on a Friday and know that if anything goes wrong, um, you know, it's not going to uh, have you be on your pagers on a Saturday. Um, so you'll know, talk about how that helps with you. Yeah. So very important thing about the Flux. So if you're just using Flux or just using GitOps, it's very important to understand that it's a very powerful tool. And if you approach it blindly, it can make things worse because you can make a change. We can make changes which bring your whole production down, especially if you use monorepos, which is counterintuitive, but still. So, what you want to do is to build a like set of enforcement of rules which you enforce upon the developers and enforce upon the process in a way we cannot avoid it. So, what I'm talking about. So, I have I have not much time, but I will bring one simple example of enforcement is a high availability and chaos engineering. So when you build your system, you have this non-functional requirement of high availability. Every, like everyone needs to be high available. Cool. But if you just write it a non-functional requirement and do not test it and do not run it in an environment which is inherently unstable, you will miss it. You will most likely it will be just high availability on paper, which will not work when uh, like something hits the fan. So, what you do, you, you implement chaos engineering. So we use Litmus for that purpose. And um, you bring, you, you make sure you, all your environments, even production ones, you run chaos engineering on production. Uh, sounds crazy sometimes, but it is. You make it inherently unstable. And developers have no way to avoid this non-functional requirements. The same way it goes with everything else. And when we build our systems, and when we're trying to like basically make it universal across a large enterprise. We want to have this enforcement rules, these best practices to be shared and to be enforced upon everyone. So this is, I think it's the most important part of success. If you do not do it, you most likely will either break, uh, your management will stop it, something goes wrong, uh, people will not understand it, will have too many ways to do stuff and it will, yeah, it will break. So again, we, we, as I said, we have runtime, and configuration domain, for configuration domain, uh, we run uh, GitLab state, like it's not pipelines, just a single verification with GitLab runner, but we have custom, because we have mono repository, like I said before, we can run static analysis on this mono repository. We can detect drifts in configuration. For example, if you have different FQDNs for different services which aims each other, you can statically check and analyze what if FQDN is the correct one, or it leads to some another resource which will, will not exist in the cluster. You can run policy management and policy enforcement using Caverna, so specific resources exist. And we also have runtime, so configuration is not enough because during runtime, things can, have, can go, go wrong. People make mistakes. Yes, developers may especially make a lot of mistakes. So we use Flagger for that purpose for, like was a question I asked about red, green, blue. We have canary deployment. We have progressive deployment, different types of deployments by using Flagger. 
which Flagger support, and we tied it with test cube, so it's run test cube checks in all our environments. In lab, in stage, in production, it's very important. It, it, it makes sure what when we deploy stuff, when the developers deploy stuff, we are not afraid. So we build trust into the system. And when you build trust into the system, when we started basically trusting what we can really deploy on a Friday, we start to deploy and deploy stuff on a Friday because we are not afraid to break stuff. And, ring, and I, last thing, Ring Central have five nines SLA for availability. It's a six minutes, it's a less than six minutes of downtime per year. So I, when I'm talking about this stuff, I mean like be really, really serious about it. So thank you so much. I think sure. we're out Close of that. time. Yes, no problem. Yeah, so, so yeah. just a summary. So security, compliance, scale, velocity, and reliability. Um, again, if you didn't take this QR code, we've got plenty of talks throughout the week. So um, we also have the Slack channel. So we'll be outside if anybody has follow-up questions or if you want to follow-up questions in Slack, please do that. Uh, we also have our email address, uh, and you can email us if you have questions. So thank you so much, and I hope you have success with Flux and Flagger. Yeah, you can ask questions me directly later. I'm available. I'll be whole day in the conference. <laughs> thank you.